Good morning, I'm Kate, and these are today's BBC School Reports headlines from the Grange School, Cheshire. Blythe Spirit has opened in Hartford to rave reviews. Lower Sixth enjoyed a successful UCAS trip to Manchester yesterday, and the History Department is in uproar this morning after one of Mr Robson's JFK bobbleheads fell onto the roof. Finally, in our special report, we ask, is there enough being done in our schools to support mental health? Following widespread reports on the challenges of mental health amongst school and university age students, the Grange BBC School Report can reveal that investigations into stress levels amongst teenagers show worrying trends. Our reporters, Jodie, Miranda and Charlotte, investigate what is being done to address this increasing problem. With an estimated 68% of students nationwide struggling to cope with pressures of exams, and a further 6,500 people taking their lives each year as a result of mental health related issues. Increasing stress levels in young people is an undeniably significant issue. With schools such as the Grange in Cheshire already undertaking mental health initiatives, including mindfulness, counselling and mental health first aid training for staff, it remains unclear exactly what makes the difference for students and how successful these initiatives are. With rising stress levels and increasing pressure placed on students undertaking their GCSEs, I want to hear how both Maisie and Scott feel on the issue that surrounds their home and school life. How do you feel academic pressure affects you? Well, I'm in second year and I don't feel that stress because I don't think I have as much work as maybe my sister does. She's doing her GCSEs this year and I can see that she's a change of stress levels because she has more work to do. Thank you. Maisie, we often hear that your school days are the best days of your life, but, but how do you feel exams and the competitive nature of university applications affect school-age students? I think that when I was younger, it was, it was quite fun. School was easier and was less stress. Now that the GCSE is coming up and then A-levels and then university, there's rising pressure and we've just got to try a lot harder and get there. It's clear that stress is prominent in these students' lives and has proven to be unhealthy with scientists claiming that stress can lead to both anxiety and depression. We interviewed our her teacher, Mrs Leonard, to uncover her opinion surrounding pressures placed on students. There is that, that drive from pupils, from parents, um, because they want to do well. So that in itself creates a momentum and then the teachers want you to do well. And sometimes that momentum can become a little bit um, too big and we need to just realign it a little bit. Do you think that schools across the country have different approaches to mental health in their schools? Yeah, very much. People treat it in different ways. School, schools have different programmes in which to support their pupils and how one school does it might be very different to another. Um, I think the Grange um, has got a lot of um, extra support to support pupils when they're having problems. It doesn't matter what the problem is but there's different people you can go to and, and we've got um, experts outside who can also offer support as well so I think it's well provided for here. Despite the support in place at the Grange described by Mrs Leonard it is evident from these figures that even students at well supported schools are still stressed. Prior to the beginning of the challenge the students involved undertook an online survey which gave us a surprising insight into the reality of how stressed students actually were. As you can see the graph is primarily blue hating that students involved felt affected by stress either most or all of the time. So, in light of these surprising and concerning results, over recent weeks building on research suggestions, a trial was carried out at the Grange to measure students' stress and see whether, with planned activities such as mindfulness, daily exercise and reduced time using technology, their original stress could be reduced. We chose the activity of walking because it is proven that exercise increases blood flow to your brain, maximising its efficiency. Therefore, when students return to study after their 10 minutes each day of walking, 
their brains were stimulated. By focusing on the there and now and mindfulness, many people found that they were less likely to get caught up in any worries about the future. Yeah, I feel quite relaxed after it. It just broke up the day. It just makes you feel like you've had time. Those who limited their usage of technology were testing the challenge to see if it really did improve their sleep, as science suggests. Our correspondent, Miranda, reports. Some students, the challenge proved difficult to maintain each day, but the majority of students managed, across the space of two weeks, to find time to reduce their stress levels in a variety of ways. All of this at a time when they were required to meet the demands of homework and revision. But realistically, to what extent did the trial make a difference? How much did it reduce the stress levels of the students at this school? After completing the challenge, students were asked to take the stress test again, considering how they felt during the two-week period. The average result in stress reduction was 10 full points. That's a 25% reduction in stress. You can see the blue portion of the graph is significantly smaller. Our trial has proven to reduce the stress of students at the Grange. It appears that changes like the practical measures put in place here at the Grange have the potential to improve mental health for students in Britain as a whole. Our reporter Charlotte spoke to the government's ex-mental health guru, Natasha Devon. Natasha, thank you for speaking to us. Many people will know that you were the government's mental health champion from 2015 to May 2016. We know that mental health, particularly in teenagers, is very much in the spotlight at the moment. But what do you feel causes pressure and stress for students? Well, that's such a complicated and difficult question to answer. The world is so very different than it was even 10 years ago. Parents tend to work long hours, we have less community, less quality family time. A lot of young people are reporting that they have huge amounts of academic and exam pressure. They're worried about unemployment, they're worried about student debt. It's a scary world out there. What can schools and parents do to help students relieve stress? Well, to be absolutely clear, this isn't just the responsibility of schools. Teachers are already massively overworked. This is a social issue that needs to be taken on by the whole community. I think there should be a public health campaign which makes parents aware that mental health is something we should be considering from birth. Ultimately, whose responsibility is it to support mental health? Ultimately, this is everybody's problem. You definitely know somebody with a mental illness and you and everybody you know has a mental health. So in our friendship groups, within schools, communities, business leaders, faith leaders. Everybody needs to take the time to educate themselves on mental health and to look out for the mental health of the people around them. And if we did that, I believe that would be a huge step towards improving the mental health of British people. Thank you, Natasha, for speaking with us this morning.